Doctor, thanks a lot for joining us today. Where our topic is chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, known by the initial COPD. And the first question is, what is COPD? COPD, or chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, is a chronic and uh, progressive condition that leads to, um, uh, to damage in the lungs. Uh, it's mostly caused by cigarette smoke. And what COPD does is um, it leads to inflammation and narrowing in the bronchial tubes as well as damage to the um, air sacs, also known as alveoli in the lungs. Um, the end result of that is it makes it harder for air to get in and out of the lung, which leads to uh, difficulty breathing. Um, the damage from COPD is, um, uh, is progressive and irreversible, but there are things we can do to uh, help patients breathe and uh, improve their quality of life. How common is COPD? How prevalent is this disease? COPD, unfortunately, is a common condition. Um, uh, most, pa uh, most patients with COPD are smoker or former uh, smokers. Uh, it's estimated that around uh, 12 million people in the U.S. have COPD. And uh, based on uh, breathing tests, it's estimated that a total of uh, 24 million individuals have uh, COPD. Um, it's an underdiagnosed condition, unfortunately. Um, again, it's seen mostly in uh, smoker or previous smokers. Uh, it's the fourth leading cause of death in the U.S. It claims the lives of um, over 120,000 people every year. So it's a common um, uh, condition, unfortunately. You mentioned it. I think you, you made it clear. Smoking is a cause of COPD. Are there any other causes of COPD? The most common cause of COPD is uh, smoking. As I mentioned, it's, um, it occurs mostly in current smokers or former smokers. So smoking is the most common cause of COPD, and this is why we always encourage and get patients to uh, try and quit smoking. But smoking is not the only cause. Uh, there are other um, causes of COPD. Um, uh, any kind of exposure to irritants that can cause injury to the, uh, to the lung can cause COPD. Mostly environmental exposures like pollution, um, occupational exposures uh, like inhalations of fumes or um, uh, toxic fumes or chemicals or dust or gas at the workplace can cause COPD. Also secondhand smoking can cause COPD. So it's mostly seen in um, smokers, but other individuals also may be at risk of developing COPD. What are the symptoms to look for in COPD? Uh, COPD is a progressive disease and um, uh, symptoms start um, gradually and progressively. It does not start um, suddenly, it's a gradual disease. The uh, symptoms that are seen initially are um, cough and sputum production. <clears throat> so patients will start with um, cough and uh, spitting up phlegm. And sometimes we see um, uh, patients complaining of chest tightness and uh, wheezing, which is a whistling sound from the chest. Uh, those are the common symptoms of COPD, which can also occur in other conditions. Uh, with more progressive or advanced disease, uh, patients develop um, shortness of breath, usually with exertion, but with more advanced diseases, um, it's also at rest. So those are the usual symptoms of COPD. How do you diagnose COPD? Um, COPD is diagnosed based on the presence of uh, signs and symptoms that I mentioned, including cough, um, wheezing, shortness of breath, in a patient who uh, has a history of exposure to irritants that can cause injury to the lungs, whether it's uh, smoking or environmental exposure or occupational exposure. Um, once we identify um, a, a patient with these symptoms, then um, the test that we usually order is a breathing test, also known as uh, spirometry, which involves uh, breathing fast and hard in a tube connected to a machine known as a spirometer, which measures how much and how fast a patient can uh, blow out. And that, this is a measurement of the lung function and it's also a, um, a measurement of the severity of uh, disease and COPD. Um, other tests that are typically ordered uh, include a chest x-ray, which is a radiographic picture of the lung, which shows typical signs of COPD, but also helps 
to exclude other conditions that can have similar symptoms to COPD. What are the long-term consequences to COPD and is there a cure? COPD unfortunately is a progressive disease and um, it can lead um, after several years to um, disability, um, loss of uh, function, poor quality of life, and um, increased mortality. So this is why we try to get this disease diagnosed early because early diagnosis leads to early treatment which can improve, which can improve patients' lives and decrease mortality. Unfortunately, there is no cure for this disease. It's a progressive disease. Um, there is no way to reverse the damage that's been done, but um, different treatments and interventions that we do help patients cope with their condition, improve their lung function, improve their quality of life, and improve survival. How is the disease treated? Well, um, there are different treatment modalities for COPD, and the important thing here to recognize is that early diagnosis of this um, condition is, is important because um, early diagnosis leads to early treatment and improved survival. Um, there are different medications that we use known as um, uh, bronchodilators, which what they do is they, um, um, uh, they open up the bronchial tubes and make it easier for air to get in and out of the lungs. So that's one group of medications that we use known as bronchodilators. The other group of medications we use is, um, an, uh, is a group of anti-inflammatory medications which target the inflammation um, in the bronchial tubes and uh, also help to um, open up the bronchial tubes and makes it easier to breathe. Um, uh, we use oxygen in patients with advanced disease when the oxygen level um, is low. There are um, uh, uh, particular types of surgery that can be helpful in patients with uh, COPD. And, in, and an important treatment modality is pulmonary rehabilitation where patients are sent to a, um, 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 a program of rehabilitation that improves their activities, um, their level of tolerance of activities and the quality of life. <clears throat> with respect to activity, does exercise help? Exercise is extremely helpful and we encourage patients to stay physically active and exercise regularly. That improves their uh, quality of life, that exercise tolerance. Um, uh, in that context, we usually refer patients to um, what's known as a pulmonary rehabilitation program, which is an exercise regimen which also involves education, um, changes in lifestyle, and it's extremely beneficial uh, for patients by educating them about their disease, about their disease um, to help them cope with their condition and um, with the exercise um, uh, a program that, that improves their exercise tolerance and their quality of life. Are there any promising treatments on the horizon for COPD? Um, there are. There are treatments on the horizon. <clears throat> so there is hope for patients with, um, with COPD. Uh, the newer medications in different stages of development um, include uh, new formulations of existing medications which uh, make it easier for patients to take uh, the medications, the longer acting medications. Uh, there are newer medications that, um, uh, that com newer inhalers that combine different types of drugs in a single inhaler which also makes it easier for patients to take their medications. There are um, newer class of medications in the pipeline, which is anti-inflammatory medications taken as a pill, not the usual inhaler used with, uh, for COPD. And they've shown promise in different studies by improve, improving the airflow to the patient's lungs. So even though it's um, a disease with no cure, but there is hope uh, for patients with uh, COPD that are new medications in the pipeline. Very well. Thank you very much for your time today, doctor. Thank you.